just wondering if you can uh, get into that a little bit. Uh, Coach B and I have talked about it in uh, certain situations, and I'm all about it. That'd be cool. A quick follow up. You know, as a guy that protects quarterbacks all day long, are you daydreaming about just wrecking one? Oh yeah, especially having to deal with Austin. Nah, I'm kidding. Ah, uh, yeah, it'd be cool. I think it'd be. I played defense in high school, and I loved it. So it'd be fun to get a different side of the ball and get after the QB. Uh, back row on the right side. Frank, you guys kind of had a little bit of musical chairs last year on the offensive line. Now you have 15 scholarship offensive linemen, six guys with starting experience. Just talk about how much better you expect to be up front this year. Yeah, you said it, you said it very well. Uh, the thing is, with offense, with every position, the more you play, the more the game slows down. But I think especially for offensive line, the more you get game time experience, it's just crucial and it's huge for your development. I think us last year having multiple guys play in different positions, it's been huge for us. And now that we can settle down and we've kind of found five guys that I think we're going to go with, obviously that can change too, but it's been really good for us. And I think that especially was huge. And then this is another spring together with Coach Anderson was huge. Uh, left side, oh, sorry, front row. Hey, Frank Barrett, Salih with CBS. Uh, Brett Bielema was in here earlier, and he said that you were not only the best center that he's ever coached, but quite possibly the best offensive lineman he's ever coached. What does that mean to you coming from a guy who's coached a, few, a good yeah. bit of offensive lineman during the day? That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. He's coached a lot of great football players, Joe Thomas, Travis Frederick, Zeitler. I could go on. Travis Swanson. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and that's, for him to say that is very humbling. And it just makes you want to make work even harder to prove them right. Uh, left side as well. Chris Walsh, SEC Country. I'm actually a Minnesota guy. Like I'm, that. I'm wondering, when you go home, how do you describe what SEC is like? Oh, I give them a lot of crap about the Big Ten and everything. <laughs> but I, I make jokes about SEC speed and everything. Like, I drive faster than them and everything like that. But I don't know. I just kind of talk about how the unreal stadiums and the players I've played against in my career, it's pretty cool. So I just kind of talk about that. Uh, left side, second row. Matt Stevens, Mike Ramirez. Frank, at this point, how do you guys still, do you guys still take pride in the idea that you line up in power formations, you run it out of the eye, you do all those types of things, and you kind of now are the black sheep of the conference play yeah. by not spreading it out and kind of trying to play power football? Well, that's one reason I really like coming to Arkansas and playing for Coach B is that style. And I'm all about it. I love getting after guys. I love trying to maul guys, get pancakes and everything. So I love it. But then again, no matter what we have to do to win the game, as long as we're getting, winning games, that's what I'm ultimately all about. Uh, right side in the back corner. How tough was it for the season to end the way it did? First Missouri, then Virginia Tech. And were there more similarities in those second-half performances or more differences in just being unique? It's very frustrating because I don't think it reflected us as a team, but I also think it was great for us overall in the long run to realize, hey, we need to finish, we need to be accountable, we need to be consistent. And I think the similarities were there where we weren't accountable, we weren't the leaders didn't step up the way they needed to step up, and I think it was ultimately on the players, and I think that's one thing in this offseason we've really focused on is that we want to be the most consistent team from start to finish. We want to be accountable to each other, and we want to know that we're going to we're gonna play from minute one all the way through. Uh, also on the right side in the back row. Frank, I wanted to ask you about your uh, your offseason, your internship. Will you be joining us in here after you're done taking yeah, questions? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's up to Bo. I'm, I'm all about it, though. I do more of the dirty work. I answer the phone calls and edit the videos. I don't always get all the pretty stuff. Next up, any more questions for Frank? Oh, okay. <laughs> right side in the corner. Take us through the last day of spring practice, and, and how tough was it to see Raleigh go through his injury and have to step away from the game? It's terrible, because... You guys see, obviously, he led the SEC in rushing. You see how talented of a football player he is. But he is a great dude, man. He is a great guy. He's a wonderful friend. He's a guy in the locker room that always has a smile on his face. So just it's heartbreaking just because he's such a good guy, and you really appreciate him and everything like that. But 
at the same time you realize how successful of a guy and how great of a guy you know he's going to conquer whatever he decides to conquer in his life. Uh, Has he uh, changed any since he's become a papa? And if so, how? Has he changed any since the birth of his daughter? And if so, how? Yeah. Well, I... uh, he looks more tired, I'll tell you that. Otherwise, I don't really know. I haven't been around him enough, I guess, and I guess he hasn't been around the baby enough to see, but he definitely looks more tired. Any more questions for Frank? All right. Thanks so much.